Thank you so much. Ooh. All right. So it's an honor to deliver the American Physician Scientists Association presidential address here today to such a group of distinguished individuals. The talent in this room spans a variety of training stages and fields of biomedical pursuit. Importantly, we're all unified because we share one common goal, preserving the future of the physician scientist, an entity known to be endangered. This partnership is what binds us, and it represents our collective power. Collaboration is not merely a choice, but a necessity in this endeavor. Collaboration is what begets community, which is essential to our progress. Looking back at both my personal and professional life, the proverb, it takes a village, rings true, not only for me, but also for the progress of APS as an organization. The year was 1994. Power ballads topped the Billboard charts. Um, Beauty and the Beast opened on Broadway as the first um, Broadway production of a Disney movie. And I was born to a um, <laughs> reformed Jewish family here in South Florida. Upon reflecting back here, I've been able to understand how my village has been able to shape my identity and outlook. The traditional gender roles were reversed in my family. So my mom, she was a human resources executive at, for Motorola, and she was a strong advocate for the use of blind resumes in hiring practices, as well as um, unconscious bias training and implementing that company-wide. She could have been considered the breadwinner by any sort of traditional standards. Outside the corporate arena, she was also a very big sports fanatic and coached my brother's middle school basketball team. On the other hand, my dad was in the fashion industry. He, when he was not driving throughout the Sunshine State selling sunglasses to opticians, he was down in the basement watching trashy reality TV like The Real Housewives. So, um, so the unconventional structure of my familial unit that went against the grain is what unknowingly provided a foundational value system at home that didn't just accept, but cherished diversity. In fact, that environment and a protective and supportive older brother pictured here is what ultimately allowed me to embrace my LGBTQ plus identity. In addition, not many people can say that they have two sets of parents, but Rocio and Arturo Blanco, who are pictured here, um, were that for me. They not only helped my parents raise me, but they were my windows into the Hispanic community of South Florida. They taught me the importance of learning about the diverse cultures present within the global melting pot, and this value has since been foundational. Overall, I was shown how the diversity, that diversity goes beyond that of race and ethnicity, but also includes gender, sexual orientation, as well as socioeconomic class. This broad view of diversity is reflected in APSA and its initiatives. In the wake of the Supreme Court decision regarding affirmative action, members of the Executive Council banded together and wrote a commentary to outline mechanisms that should be implemented to diversify the physician scientist workforce. These efforts included increasing the number of trainee positions in physician scientist training programs, expansion of early outreach programs, and strengthening mentorship structures, as well as improving access to formative research experiences and implementing a transparent, holistic, and accessible application review process. APSA continues to brainstorm ways in which it can increase the diversity found within the physician scientist workforce and pipeline. After a successful inaugural diversity summit in 2019, we are collaborating once again with the Burroughs Welcome Fund to host an even larger event this summer and expect that our human-centered design thinking approach will only further identify niches to intervene. My villages and the early lessons taught extend past my nuclear family that I saw daily during my childhood. My paternal grandmother, Lila Waldman, worked within institutions of higher education beginning in 1940s. Beyond showing me the glitz and glamour of a Broadway show, she taught me the importance of relationship building and how events such as this one can serve as a forum for collaboration and fundraising. She always told me in her typical Jewish bubby way, if you don't ask, you don't get. APSA takes these ideals to heart. It is an honor to work closely with the AAP and ASCII this year to put on the joint meeting. Our collaborative relationship extends back to 2005, and the strength of our relationship and bond only continues to grow and deepen year after year. I particularly want to share my deepest gratitude to the current presidents of both societies, Johnny Unitas and Ben Humphreys, as well as members of society management, Lori, John, Colleen, and Karen, 
for their indelible support as I traversed this role and uncovered what it means to be a leader. OPS's partnership, has, partnership footprint has continued to grow. The Borough's Welcome Fund has awarded us three years of funding, not only for this joint meeting, but also for the initiatives that we um, put on as an organization. Additional funding from the National Institutes of Health, the American Association of Immunologists, American Society for Nephrology, the American Society for Investigative Pathology, the Society of Academic Emergency Medicine, and Foundation for Anesthesia Education and Research subsidizes much of the trainee travel to this meeting. We are also particularly grateful for our continued collaboration with the Lasker Foundation. Beyond sponsoring the annual Lasker Laureate Lecture this year with Dr. David Huang, we have collaborated on an additional event entitled Interviewing an Icon. This new session kicked off the meeting here at 9 a.m. today and served as an interactive opportunity for individuals to hear from a successful physician scientist, Lasker board member Dr. Elizabeth Nabel. Our relationship only continues to blossom. Lasker has pledged support for our regional meetings moving forward, and APSA leaders will have the opportunity to participate in the Ask a Scientist series so that the trainee voice can continue to be heard. A move to Chicago at 10 years old served as a pivotal moment of growth. It was the first time I had seen snow, but more importantly, it served as an opportunity to expand my village. We moved to Cary, Illinois, the demographics were in stark contrast to what I experienced in Coral Springs, Florida. In Coral Springs, I was immersed in a vibrant Jewish community. In Cary, Illinois, I was the only Jewish student in the class. However, I took this as an opportunity to share my culture with classmates during Jewish holidays, and most importantly, during my bar mitzvah, which had the interesting theme of Alex's Medical Center, as you can see pictured here. <laughs> Beyond long-lasting friendships with my peers, here pictured Amber DeVries, my very close friend from childhood. I also forged strong relationships with teachers in the sciences, Teresa Ewell pictured, and Ms. Sandra Carlson, who were AP chemistry and AP biology teachers, um, respectively, that both nurtured my biomedical interests. Going off to college, I went to the University of Wisconsin, go Badgers, um, and that marked another transformative experience for me. I was accepted to the biology core curriculum program, an honors program led by Dr. Janet Batsley and Dr. Michelle Harris, pictured here, with an alumni community that I later found out includes John Schiller. BioCore emphasized inquiry-based learning rather than rote memorization. How do we know what we know was the motto. Laboratory sessions complemented didactic lectures and allowed students to drive the process of scientific discovery from experimental design to um, oral and written presentations. The program really emphasized the guide on the side mentality by providing reagents like C. elegans, transgenic C. elegans, and yeast for us to design experiments with. This approach led to a deeper understanding of foundational biological concepts. As you can see here, these are folks pictured through oral presentations. This is me and a friend of mine at Willow Creek at Wisconsin where we did an experiment on fecal coliform bacteria. I subsequently joined Peter Ferrazano's laboratory, coupled with a course entitled Entering Research, led by Elaine Alred. Peter and his colleague, Pei Lin, were both mentored previously by Don Don Sun when they were studying neonatal stroke at, um, during their training. Peter and Pei Lin ultimately decided to join forces as young investigators and starting their labs, and they shared key personnel, as well as supported each other in getting grants. This collaborative model was my first experience in the scientific arena and was formative, to say the least. In addition, Peter and Palin were both successful physician scientists and early stage investigators. This demonstrated to me that there is a two-way crosstalk between lab work and clinical practice. When there's a missing link clinically, discovery-based research attempts to elucidate pathological mechanisms with the hopes of discovering possible interventions that affect change clinically. I ultimately learned that I wanted to be immersed in both sides of the crosstalk, not just the producing or receiving ends. Medical school over here at Emory in Atlanta subsequently brought new challenges, new mentors, and a community of peers pictured here. From problem-based learning in small group led by clinician educator Dr. Jason Schneider to peer teaching anatomy labs with close friends, mentorship from faculty and peers was essential to learning the foundations of medicine. 
these personal experiences in college and high school and um, the preclinical phase of medical school demonstrate the sheer importance of mentorship to identifying a peer career path and its ultimate pursuit. APSA realizes this and has been at the forefront of mentoring the next generation of physician scientists via our undergraduate mentorship program that enrolls over 300 diverse individuals each year. We continue pushing the envelope by connecting with the National Association of Advisors for Health Profession for Professions to disseminate opportunities more widely to this group of individuals. We're also very lucky to work with our close collaborators, AAP and ASCII, to provide mentorship programming to current trainees. Diana Milowitz, AAP Council member, APSA board member, and this year's Founders Award winner, and her colleagues conceptualized the idea of the Physician Scientist Trainee Network. And it has been an honor to work with all of them in creating collaborative cross-committee con initiatives to launch a robust mentorship program for current trainees. This year, 54 late-stage trainees, G4 and above, have been assigned 12 mentoring groups led by one AAP and one ASCII member in the trainees' field of interest. We look forward to building upon this community of mentorship families over the next six years and track how this intervention ultimately mitigates the leaky physician scientist pipeline we are all too familiar with. In tandem, we have assigned 122 early stage trainees into 22 groups for cross-sectional cross -sectional mentorship at this joint meeting as well. It is important to note that the fields of science and medicine are not discrete isolated units that fall in line with continental boundaries. Instead, these fields transcend national boundaries to create a dynamic and interconnected community whose failures and successes hinge upon one another. For example, penicillin was discovered at the University of Oxford by Sir Alexander Fleming with subsequent basic science elucidated by his colleagues. However, development and production of this new life-saving antibiotic was, during World War II, required collaboration with the United States Department of Agriculture and pharmaceutical companies. COVID vaccine development and deployment is an even more modern example of the intrinsic need for international collaboration to tackle difficult challenges. Knowing this, I pursued graduate training via the National Institutes of Health Oxford Cambridge Scholars Program under the mentorship of Michael Leonardo, one of the founders of said program, and Gabriel DeLuca, with invaluable support from the International Biomedical Research Alliance. APSA also understands the importance of a diverse global biomedical landscape. This led to the development of the International Consortium of Clinician Scientist Trainee Organizations. Yes, I know it's a mouthful, ICSTO for short. Um, and this includes APSA-like organizations from all around the world, including individuals all throughout Europe, Asia, and Canada. Since um, forming in 2019, we have come together to compile a comprehensive list of training programs for physician scientists globally, including details regarding program structure and entrance requirements. This data gathering initiative serves as the first step to making essential comparisons in physician scientist training worldwide, whilst generating a unified student organization for advocacy efforts. I would be remiss if I didn't take the time to thank the APSA Executive Council that I've worked with over this year. I was inspired daily by your dedication and your tireless efforts. I also want to thank all members of our board of directors here at APSA, as well as our management team, including Amy, Stephen, and Sarah. I also want to extend a warm welcome to newly elected leadership, who I know will be just as passionate under the strong influence and leadership of Cynthia Tang. As you can see, there were many cinematic parallels between my journey and APSA's. I'll close with an analogy for you all. Clinical work and discovery-based research fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Piece by piece, the jigsaw puzzle is constructed, each piece with its specific place equally as important as the other pieces to the overall scene that it creates. Patient care is the big picture, the end results of all the discovery-based research that has been conducted over time. So what does this mean for the life of a physician scientist? Although clinically you can see an endpoint and accomplish it through assembling the already known pieces of the puzzle together, investigative research adds new pieces to the puzzle. However, a puzzle so complex begs for creative and collaborative solutions, and your influential village is the key. Thank you.